Good morning and welcome to your darling station, Living Radio 90.9. And today, as usual, uh, we're sorry we've stumped you with your favorite program, Issues of the Month. And today, we are on it. Fortunately enough, we have our, our great analyst in the house today. What are we looking at in today's episode of Issues of the Moment? Today, we are looking at the veterans of uh, the Nigerian Biafran Civil War, what made us the one Nigeria we are. Remember, the war ended goalless, so there was no victor, no vanquish. And that is why we are still one Nigeria today. But there are certain things, silent points that we have to look at today. The inventions of Obunigwe and so on. And also concerning this organization called the, the Mining Concept Limited, the consultant with the Federal Ministry of uh, Defense, <coughs> that is making sure that uh, most of these war victims and most of these uh, bombs you know, are, are, are recovered without hurting anybody. These are one or two other things we are going to look at today. And with me in the studio today is uh, Comrade Namdi Elekwachi. Comrade Namdi Elekwachi is a historian, not just a historian, he's a public affairs analyst and political affairs analyst. He's a man who loves dealing with numbers and dates. He is in the studio with me. Above all, he's a televangelist. Come ready and welcome to the program. Thank you for having me. Good day to you. Good day to our listener. How do you? All right. Recently, the Nigerian Biafran War was reenacted in Owere a few days back, and the consultant of the Federal Ministry of Defense, Professor Balajak Yakubu, displayed some deadly weapons manufactured by Biafran engineers. According to Professor Bala, all the weapons were recovered from the war theaters in parts of the southeast and south south states of Nigeria, of Nigeria here, and carefully detonated. Some of the homemade weapons include multi-barrel Ubunigwe, explosive device Ojuku anti-mines made like vehicle hydraulic jack and anti-tanks and armored weapons carriers. Other events included long-range rocket launcher, anti-aircraft missile, bunker cracker, bunker cracker launch system, short-range round steel Ubunigwe, Ujuku A launch weapon system, and that is a drop bomb, Ujuku, Ujuku motor, Ujuku bucket and Ujuku motors and so many others. And this organization called the Demining Concept, they've been in this business of going around the South, South and South, South East. I've been a witness to a few of them in uh, Imo State here. We are the, we are the get out these bombs. Very soon, uh, I think the manager will be the, the consultant will be in the studio here to display some of those weapons, you know, discovered from these war affected areas. But uh, before we go into these uh, weapons, how they were formed, how they were made and invented by indigenous of uh, Nigeria here, and how Nigerians have used them, it is important to look at this, the Mining Concept Limited. What is your idea about this organization? Uh, thank you so much. Without uh, wasting time, I will say that it is continuation of what ought to have been post-war reconstruction even reconciliation and then rehabilitation. Because the war ended, just like you rightfully said, uh, no victor, no vanquished. But in practice, it's beyond that. Yes, there are still grievances, or there are still um, a lot of resentments, uh, anger being not in some parts of the country, that the way the war ended, and that the post-war era did not actually commence uh, in meaningful Reconciliation. So what um, uh, the mining concept is doing is to go to war affected areas like you rightly mentioned, those places where you have unexploded ordinances, UXOs, unexploded ordinances, where perhaps some of these weapons or this caliber of weapons you actually mentioned, be the um, uh, uh, bunker and uh, cracker base system or launch system rather, or any of those things, anti-personnel or bullywe, multi barrel or and whatever. Uh, some of them are still embedded in some places and they usually go off with time because people they are not even aware that such things are there so what they are doing is in order to continue to read 
the, the, that part of the country uh, of such weapons and where there is need for neutralization, for detonation, evacuation, um, or, or even the mining, they will deploy uh, their staff members or their men to the field and do the needful so that life will continue. Because it is so much uh, painful and horrible, even regrettable, that uh, 57 years after the war, people are still dying from uh, explosives that were actually planted during the war. Uh, the other day, um, uh, Rwanda, we are celebrating 30 years of the genocide that happened in their country, and we are seeing the milestones. Uh, whether you are Tutsi or Hutsi, nobody is even interested in whether you are any, any, uh, any, any uh, from any of the rival groups. They have not been able to uh, build um, a cohesive, virile, stable nation and polity than we have been able to uh, in the last uh, five, going to six decades. So I think um, uh, what, the, 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 what the mining concept is doing requires the support of every one million Nigerian, from the government to the non-government sector, to every person who can actually support it one way or the other, to make sure that some of these ordinances are evacuated and that they are actually discovered, then detonated, neutralized, so that we don't continue to get these uh, kind of horrible deaths. Now, when you look at it, some of them who were not part of the war, immediately after the war, who had to go back to their farms normally. Mm. Some, many of them today have amputated legs and hands as mm. a result of uh, these uh, unexploded uh, you know, weapons you know, mm. that were buried. And that is exactly what the demining concept have been backed on doing. But how much do you think the federal government has been, has, how much has the federal government supported or rather sponsored this organization to ensure that uh, all these places will be free of these war ordinances? Yes, I think apart from what we are doing here, there is hardly a means of communicating what the government is doing about or concerning this area. There is hardly a means of communicating or even amplifying the role of government. And government cannot do everything. That's why you have uh, companies, experts, like uh, the mining concept. You need them and they also need government support to go to the field and do their work. And uh, what is their work? Their work is to like I did say earlier, read the, uh, the, uh, the parts of the, uh, of the country where these, war or these uh, unexploded uh, ordinances were actually planted or embedded, uh, covering the states of the southeast and the south-south, to read them of such um, uh, unexploded uh, devices or ordinances so that life can continue normally. And what government can do is to help them, support them in whatever way, uh, form or, sh or, or shape they can to make sure that uh, uh, they go to their field and then uh, without any problem, including logistic problems, so that they can be able to uh, live up to expectation and uh, up to billing in terms of uh, neutralizing all the explosives that were buried during that uh, uh, period in our history. All right. Um, Yakubu himself lamented that remnant of the weapon used in the various theaters of war have sadly continued to kill or permanently maim unsuspecting citizens. Mm. I experienced that in Oware and part of Anambra in one of the in one of the in, in one of the exposure of uh, these uh, these uh, war you know remnants, mm. Bunigues and so on. Yes. So many of them are there, and this time and now they are talking about the stockpiling and making sure that even the the army generals and so on would witness how far they have gone. And now it looks as if government is not very active in making sure that these things are uncovered mm. and dealt with once and for all. So what, what do you think is this government's uh, duty concerning this? Yes, I think what the government duty is or ought to have been is to, like I did say earlier, mobilize uh, experts, experts like uh, the mining consultant and the rest to go to the field and uh, see what can be done about this. Because uh, like, 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 like you did say, uh, uh, unsus unsuspecting citizens keep dying daily in their numbers. Those who may not even know the grade or the, or, or, or the caliber of war or offenses that we are launched. Even those who were not part community. of the war. Yeah, they were not part of the war. Because we are, we are talking about, now look at it, life expectancy in Nigeria is still 55 years, and the war is 57 years. It simply means that over half the population of the country did not witness the war. That's just the meaning. So those who did not even, then those who were even children, who never knew or who were never even aware when some of these things happened, none of them can tell where these ordinances were buried. But we can take scientific approach to uh, uh, discover and then uh, unbury some of these things and then 
uh, neutralize them so that life continues normally. So that's what the government ought to do. Uh, that, 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 that's what the government ought to do in this regard. But that's it again. I think we also need to go one better scientifically. What can we do? Uh, do we need help from uh, outside world? What can we do to make sure that the, the, we are in uh, a better position to discern, you understand, to discern or to know that some of these things are buried where they are buried? Because as we speak now, the war ended with the surrender of Biafra, but not all the weapons were surrendered. Some of the weapons were left somewhere, so that, and they became um, uh, uh, um, um, uh, explosives that could actually go out and go off any time. And that's what we are suffering. So since there was no ceremony or any well, anywhere where weapons um, uh, um, uh, uh, implements of war of Biafra uh, 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 soldiers we are seen handed over to the federal government, it simply means that some of these things may be somewhere. And many people who fought uh, during that time did not fight in their own communities. So they, um, they, the people who are now living there cannot tell where these things are buried. Understand or where they are planted. So many people, just like myself now, I could be fighting or be, be defending your 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 own community yeah. with the um, uh, adversary or enemy advancing. I could uh, embed or plant something to uh, detonate to go off, which may not even go off that particular moment, and then it, it, it becomes a problem. So some of the people who are living there do not know what. The, the scale of what or, 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 or the level of offensive that was pushed uh, uh, in defense of some of those places. So it becomes a problem that after the war now, we are witnessing these things uh, happen, uh, blow and farms and places where people are, uh, people are still suffering uh, fatal injury because of uh, the, uh, what online we should have taken care of if we had empowered uh, um, uh, experts and then people who know the business very well, like. Uh, and the mining concepts and the others. Thank you. All right. Now, the, considering what is happening at the northern part of uh, Nigeria today, the mm. the insurgency, Boko Haram, and yes. so many of them, and the, if at the end of the day this thing comes to an end, mm. this most of the explosives they are using yes. can also be sent back, yes. and then it will continue to have. Exactly. So, so uh, what do you think the government also considering this? Mm. Because you cannot say we are true with it, because no, it's like the there. war is still on uh, with what is happening in yes, the northern uh, part. Of even Nigeria. in Boko Haram uh, uh, affected areas, uh, where, where Boko Haram is able to carry out the onslaught, you see a lot of improvised explosive devices, IEDs, are there. Uh, they are still going up as we speak now. Uh, there, I think uh, a, a, a military um, uh, 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 a, a military vehicle actually yes is a snake carrier um, uh, actually once ran into uh, uh, some of these uh, explosives and they got uh, uh, bombed and killed in the process because they may not be familiar with the terrain that's number one then number two in the course of fighting war there are times when a side pushes the other side you understand to retreat you are pushing the enemy to retreat and you are advancing. You don't even know what the enemy has laid there in terms of mines or landmines and the rest of it. So it becomes a problem. A lot of them will definitely not explode because they are man-made. Whether they are automatic or not automatic, they are man-made. They may not even explode and they may take time and they may take years. They may take, and most times you see that they begin to rust and begin to wear a different look that you might even be able to tell that this is explosive or this is a war caliber weapon. In which case, and uh, uh, people continue to live, uh, go there, access that uh, environment or those coordinates. When it actually goes off or blow, it becomes a problem. Uh, it is still unfortunate that uh, um, following the war, uh, we are witnessing this. So likely, there is likely to not just only Boko Haram affected areas. Now these days we have bandits too. They are also using sophisticated weapons, um, surface to air missiles to bring down or gun down aircraft and the rest of them. We've seen that uh, happen before in many places. So I can't begin to tell you now. We've also seen that um, uh, uh, not just not just weapons like bomb, explosive, but we also things like grenades, even bullets, things like or, or, all of those things may be lost somewhere because they have not actually gonna um, exploded and then they pose threats to human existence. They pose um, uh, 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 existential or harmful threats to communities within those coordinates and uh, uh, those uh, uh, areas, if you like. Thank you. All right. Um, 
It is also important to know that our phone lines are open. You can call us even before we go on break. You can call us on 0803-547-8642. I'll take it again, 0803-547-8642. You can tell us, make your contributions. If you know anything about explosives and some of the more affected areas, the demining concepts are ready. As soon as the federal government is ready to sponsor them, they are ready to make sure that the whole place will be a wonderful living place for all humanity. All right, having said that, now having talked about this idea of the Boko Haram and these, uh, the mining concept with the good job they've been doing, especially at this part of the Southeast, mm. South, South, and then proceeding to North as we speak right now. And then the Boko Haram is still intact with what is happening. Then looking at the Nigerian government and what has been happening recently with the economy of this country, do we consider the job of this demining concept led by Professor Bala Jack Yakubu? Do we consider it as an important aspect that Nigerian economy should look into? Yeah, very, very much. Because uh, most of the places we're talking about are agrarian communities. The agrarian communities where you need uh, farming activities to uh, happen or to continue happening so that uh, uh, issues like food crisis would be actually addressed. Uh, to the barest minimum. Then again, in this day and age, when Nigeria is a signal to, to a lot of conventions, conferences, uh, uh, parties, uh, uh, protocols, talking about climate change and then talking about environmental discipline, it's very, very, if it behooves that Nigeria does the needful by evacuating some of this. And that's why you need, you see, you need, the level of justice required in Nigeria, people don't get them, you understand? I think it's necessary for things like this to be done so that you have thorough cleansing of the war affected areas, thorough cleansing and evacuation of deadly weapons that are still piling somewhere uh, or, or unknown to the inhabitants, most of whom were not even born during the time uh, the, the weapons were actually embedded. So um, yes, Nigeria has a, a, lot, a lot of commitments, even suffering things like erosion, you understand, desert equipment, that these are natural. We cannot allow um, uh, man-made uh, 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 disasters like this one now to continue to take a toll on our environmental responsibility. Uh, if we must uh, actually achieve it or go on better, we must make sure that we adopt all the processes, including safety thereof, to towards our IMA, ensuring that all the war affected areas. And, and this, and I, and, I, and I want to use this to call the federal government. They know the war theaters. There are reports, there are records, there are you know, even memoirs, uh, even autobiographies. People have actually written about the war. So they can actually take their time, go to those places and begin to do work, see what can be done. Uh, I, for example, if I, if I say a place like um, um, uh, Uzuakole, during the war, it was a, 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 a very strong theater where Babangida even suffered uh, injury, you understand, uh, to his uh, foot. Then again, a place like uh, Port Harcourt, you know, there was this fierce battle, exchange of fire uh, um, between the federal government and the Biafra forces to know who will take who, who, who. Even about here, too, you understand. But you do not compare those to places like Ohafia, where the war did not even much happen, and some, some part of nearby communities where people actually surrendered, you understand. So there are places that became theater of war. There are places that became epicenter of violence. And those are the places where there may be high concentration of some of these devices or explosives. All right, uh, we are going to go on a very short break. Remember, we have the demining concept in Nigeria as we speak today that are making sure that most of these explosives are dealt with. And just to make sure we have a very free and friendly environment. And uh, when we come back, we will now look at some of the inventors of Obuniwe that uh, survived the Biafra War. Don't go away. We'll be back. You're welcome back. And uh, we are back on it. On the second segment, we are going to look at some of the inventors of Obuniwe. And then uh, these uh, explosives that are being discovered today by the Mining Concept Limited, who and who planted them. Were they imported? How was Biafra able to achieve that? This we're going to look at. In this second segment, I'm still with the uh, analyst in the house, Comrade Namde Lekwachi. All right, today we know about, we've had so much about Professor Felix Orago, 90-year-old man. He was the head of Biafran Research and Production Rep 
who developed Obuniwe and successfully processed palm oil to power jet aeroplane during the Afro Nigerian Civil Genocide War. And this man we're talking about is still alive. There were some others who assisted him in making sure that this Obuniwe will come to pass, the likes of uh, said one ago, Willie Achuku, Sylvester Akalono, Nat Obala, Godian Ezekwe, Benjamin Wosu, and others. These people, some of them are still alive, especially Professor Felix, who is a who is a, a nuclear who is a nuclear physicist. He is still alive as a consultant in Lagos, even as we speak today. Now the question becomes: what has Nigeria been able to do with this? Why are we talking about this? We are talking about this because it is a, it is a little wonder to note that the Nigeria Nigeria buried these inventors after after the war. Today, Indonesia celebrated successfully processing of palm oil to power aeroplane, a feat that a man of this man of this team was able to achieve about 56 years ago. Mm. And today, nothing has been said or done about them, but most of them are still alive. Comrades, let's take it from there. Yes, I think um, uh, it's still boiling down to one thing, how the war ended. When we say... Uh, no victor, no vanquished. And we say reconciliation, reconstruction, and rehabilitation, the three R's. And we say that um, the country had actually been able to cohere or to come together to exist as well. And then we don't learn our lessons. It's because we would rather bury the history that is Biafra war. We anathematize it. We don't want to talk about it in public discourse like this. We don't want to learn our lessons from there or there from. Like I did say earlier, in Rwanda, they are celebrating 30 years of the genocide of 1994. Just last week, a couple of, and I was asking myself, when do we do a, um, a, a similar thing for uh, Biafra? And that if the federal government had actually owned the narrative, had actually done more, had actually gone better than it had uh, done in, in, in past years, if possible, uh, issuing apologies where necessary, and then reconciling uh, meaningfully, not uh, just by words. We will not have some of the disturbances we've had in the Southeast and then making sure that there is inclusion in the governance structure. You know what I'm saying now? There wouldn't be some of the agitations, there wouldn't be some of the disturbances we are seeing here. It is because the war ended and never ended in the minds of certain gladiators who are still alive today. Some of who had become presidents, some of who had become ministers, who also continue to intrude exclusivism as it may have to affect a certain part of the country, who now say, okay, since the war had ended in papers alone, but not in oppression and not in our ways of doing things, we cannot be part of this system. We cannot be forced to belong to this system. And the young ones who are not even familiar with the history of what transpired in 1966 through 1967 are beginning to do what? Uh, 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 join the bandwagon to say, we want out, we want out, we want out. But the truth remains, what significant effort is Nigeria making to reconcile, to heal, to unite, and to make sure that we stay together? Now, bring me back to this place. I think after the war, the federal government said, okay, we've seen a lot of inventions that were carried out by the different forces. Why did these inventions happen? These inventions happen because um, necessity is the mother of invention. During the war, we know of the blockade. There was no access to the outside world. People, children were dying of Koshoko, people were being uh, killed, uh, there was bomb uh, uh, stuff everywhere, you understand, in, in what uh, uh, then became the different state of Biafra. Now, the government then had to improvise, call the scientists there, some of them were gra graduates of Imadon or somewhere from Soka, somewhere outside the country. They came together and formed this institution, RAP. Uh, there were Willie Achuku, Godi and Ezequim, and the Oragu, the man we are talking about today who went into research and whatever they did were locally sourced all these reports you're talking about were locally sourced and fabricated none of them came from our side today we have billions you know how much we have spent fighting boko haram then we cannot account for we cannot even give any significant result to say after spending all this just last year alone uh, a, a, a report emerged which claimed that in the last quarter of last year from october to december of 2023 Federal government spent over three trillion naira procuring weapons, procuring weapons. We've even had cases where there are failed contracts where some persons who were contracted to 
uh, procuring weapons will actually divide the force. That's good for uh, and, 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 yes, another day. Now, I think after the war, the federal government came up with an uh, uh, institution, the COVID Proda Project Development Authority or Pro Project uh, the 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 development uh, uh, area or something. It was in Enugu, cited in Enugu. They said all the Biafra engineers should come together. Let's harness or let us learn from you. But um, I think the federal government could not even sustain that project by way of funding and everything. It just put out that way, and that's how it's been. You understand? To that uh, um, extent, I can I can tell you that we, the, you see, Nigeria during the war may have actually achieved. Um, unison, but it did not achieve what lesson that war was to serve was to tell you that you may not depend on Europe. You, you understand? To invent, because we are, we are talking about a war where the Biafrans we are able to repurpose to repurpose civilian jets to becoming a military jet to repurpose many things uh, vehicles. We are then you talk about processing of red oil to becoming uh, jets uh, A1 fuel. So it's something that, that uh, inventions people need to be asking questions about. And the fact that we did not even try to study this in our universities, whether you talk about departments of physics, chemistry, and what, what have you, it's also the reason why we still depend on the white man for things like shutters, for things like uh, 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 McLean and the rest of them. Why? Because we don't want to follow that narrative. What happened to Biafra in the 30 months uh, period the Fatricide War happened? What were the lessons to be learned? Or is there any way we can say, okay, these persons did this, they must also um, uh, 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 build from where they uh, stopped, you understand? Uh, and it's unfortunate if somebody like Oragu dies today, he, he, it would have been a loss of institution. Many institutions like him had gone, uh, the likes of uh, uh, those who were actually there then, many of them are no, are no longer there, then this continues to do what undermine our inventive capacity as a nation. You understand? So it's high time we began this conversation. All right. I, 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 but now, uh, what do you think? Do you think the federal government has fed well with those people? Because immediately after the war, Oragu finally who went back to the classrooms at, at um, Soka, mm. you know, where he was lecturing shortly before the war. Mm. And now, after the war, the federal government gave him an appointment, but not on the production a lot on the pro uh, production aspect because mm. if you look at what they did about 56 years ago processing palm oil mm. to power aeroplane jet and so on and how how much has the nigerian government tapped into this they have not tapped much and that's why i'm calling for us to begin to look at these things and uh, it's unfortunate that uh, what we are having here is a systematic approach or systematic means of trying to kill this part of our history. If we've had people carry out research, we would have been making new inventions. I think I was reading the book uh, entitled In Biafra, Africa Died by Isa, and it said that Russia said that a nation that could manufacture Ogunibwe, manufacture all these explosives or all these weapons, all these devices, even grenades, in less than six months or one year of existence should be feared. That was a war through which God was giving but that is what after the war we had foreign policy experts like um, uh, Baraji Akiyemi. You, 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 you understand? Say, talk, talking about black power, that Africa should pursue nuclear weapons the same way the West are pursuing. So, talk about black power. It was better than Biafra, but unfortunately, it was also buried in Biafra because we have failed to say, these guys come and give us, lend us some of your bread. Let us open the book. Let us you see the best way to kill something, Prof. You know, you are learning, is to keep it outside the book. Mm. You understand? Mm. When you keep it out of the book, it means international federations will no longer assess that power. information. You understand? So today we are not making to say this is, has anybody been able to review rap mm. of Biafra? Has any researcher been able to um, uh, take the milestones, the blend and the and the fire they went in that short period? Had anybody gone to their lean budget? I'm talking about lean budget to say, oh, this was the money they had. See what they were able to invent. Nigeria is spending trillions of naira every budgetary year, every budgetary cycle. Saying we are going to defeat Boko Haram. Unfortunately, we are, we are nowhere near that uh, feat. So it should be a lesson for us. You understand? A lesson for us that people who were blockaded, people who were 
what of course they say is not in a circle yet they were able to invent the challenge of nature the challenge of warfare uh, pushed them to invent something nigeria had, cannot even boast of 60 years uh, after you understand so it speaks to something and that's the big challenge i think people like god and or Agu and so on, they should be immortalized there should be a place where their names you understand account or embedded maybe in 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 a in a in a in a in a in a in, in, a, in an obelisk or or, or or other ornament you understand to say these are the person see what they did we should begin to talk about we should own the narrative the world doesn't mean Nigeria has ended. After all, Nigeria, Nigeria, Nigeria is still our country. We are still here. We are contributing our quota to the growth thereof. He should have an opportunity to say people like um, uh, um, uh, Ben Bouli and the rest of them who later became unsung uh, heroes, if you like, or unsung uh, soldiers. What were their roles? What did they believe could make Nigeria work? Was the coup of 1967, January, actually uh, end at ending Nigeria or continuing it uh, through other means? Well, was it actually travel? We should begin to ask questions to help us unite because I am beginning to see some anti historians who go out there, Bambi, and turn out a, 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 a lot of falsity, you understand, to uh, 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 miseducate young ones. And through that way, we are losing the real narrative. And uh, the hate, the embers of hate, are being stoked. Uh, and nobody talking about true healing. Then I mean, we talked about the Okuta panel, well, Justice uh, Constitution Committee. What happened? You understand a lot of things we do we sweep, we sweep over the carpet down listen in rwanda they did not they for them to heal they did not adopt the white man strategy like the in, in south africa you have the peace and consolation community following the appetite in in rwanda they introduced the gatacha system of course where they bring you they use their local system you understand they use the local system to administer justice and it worked well for them so we must begin to look in what the obligates the ojipu buckets the bunker uh, 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 and the every other invention of uh, uh of, of that particular oh, period yeah. must be studied must be is that the world taught many people how to do what they became um so, so survivors you understand people who could dodge weapons people who knew, who then knew how to do what hide in the in the, in the bunker I wish we could have more time to tell this story. All right. Uh, now, uh, before we call it a quit today, now that uh, Indonesia has uh, successfully celebrated the processing of palm oil to power aeroplane, don't you think it will remind Nigerians something? Or rather, they will now want to wake up. Since uh, some of this man, especially their head, is still alive. <laughs> Professor Ragu is still alive. Yes. And is in Lagos, as we speak. Uh, there, there, are things, there are things this country will rather forget. Than, than which to remember, you understand? That I think they want to forget. And I will tell you this, you see, um, I am doing a research work now currently on this same subject matter. And uh, I have had access to books written by authors from this part of the country. Chinua Achebe, uh, Ademo Yega, Ben Boulier, many of them, including published and, uh, and then interviews in, in journals. Then I began to call for books from the northern part of the country. I want to read Amadou Bello. You understand? Because he had books. He, he wrote his autobiography then. I want to read some of the to know their views concerning the oneness of Nigeria. That's where the problem is. People who are ruling Nigeria, even as of yet, are not true Nigerians in the real sense of the word. I was talking with someone and said, there is a level of nationality and commitment as if you may have. Other nationalists never had. Yeah. They were nationalists actually, no doubt about that. But their nationalism started from the regions. As it was nationalism started from the center. It was not about our nature. It was not about our number. It was not about our label. It was about Nigeria being independent of colonial found and clutchy. Unfortunately, we don't have such people again. The other day, Ubu Nano died. I was asking Chris, I said, who among the contemporary politicians could make the level of sacrifice Ubu Nano made until the wind of Emily Logan? blew him out of the water and i'll tell you this he sacrificed his position not once not twice for buare and for ulufalai you understand yeah. he bought the apc uh from and he registered that party with his form how did he end so on we begin to talk about reconciliation that's when the federal government can take seriously matters thereof say okay uh, these different people how did they uh, achieve this don't be surprised that it may be from the biafran history or story you understand? Because Biafra better many firsts in terms of invention, many firsts. 
it may be from this history or this story that Malaysia is doing this today. And also forget that they took from us in 1956, Pam sibling, they studied the, the topography of Nigeria and the climate, and they said, okay, we have a lot in common. They went back to their country and then began to grow palm oil. Today, we are buying from them. We are now buying. It may also not be far from it that they heard about this, went to the laboratory and began to do it. Now, listen, when the virus came, we never remember that a man known as Augustine Ujok will be professor at the University of Nigeria Soka, invented cholera vaccine. We were out of the way. Everybody was looking for AstraZeneca. Governors were becoming sick. We were being flown abroad. Even ministers were dying. Personnel F to the president were dying. And unfortunately, our universities were on strike because we do not value research. So how can we talk about research and planning of, the, of, of Biafra in a country where virtually everybody wants to leave the, 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 the Jayaka syndrome? And when they go there, the kind of research they make, they contribute to, will develop under all other countries. And then Nigeria will be the potential loser. So it's very, very paramount. We begin to elect leaders who think Nigeria first before themselves and their ethnic region. Thank you. All right, before we go, let us also look at this. Let's go back to the demanding concept limited led by Professor Balajak Yakumbu. Now that it is very, very, it is uh, almost impossible for the Nigerian government to go back uh, to go back to what has happened during the war, to learn their lesson, just like what they said, no mm. questions are asked, no lessons are learned. They can't come to the drawing table and say, how, how were these people able to achieve this? Mm. This would have been enough to have created. And look at Indonesia, now talking about uh, uh, processing oil to have the aeroplane. Yeah. And yet, the people who started it are here in Nigeria. Yeah. They are Nigeria. <laughs> we are you not know, talking about how you know, much they've you know, been supported. You know, you just reminded me something. Sometime last year, I think we talked about it, uh, the aviation operators, yeah. the airline operators said they were increasing the, uh, the price of the price of, 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 uh, of flight. And people were wondering. They said, one, apart from the issue of trapped fund, funds, the thing that I want to commend the present Bolamati for clearing the forward, uh, all those forward contracts, is clearing that now. Then they said they said they could not access jet A1 fear. What is it A1 fear? The one used to power aeroplane. Mm. But you would have used other means. Yes. You understand? Or alternative means to achieve the same results. It happened in Biafra. It can also happen in Nigeria. Biafra had collapsed. Nigeria had succeeded Biafra. Nigeria must inherit civilization of Biafra. To tell you this, Rome conquered Greece. And, that, and, and, and continue with the civilization history known as Greco Roman civilization, which means they did not build the civilization of Greece. And, they, uh, and there's a saying among us historians, they say, why Rome conquered Greece, conquered Greek, took Rome captives. In terms of what? In terms of civilization. So Nigeria must learn and succeed. All because right. this is the 21st century. Nigeria must learn and do what? And Soccer. succeed. Thank you. All right. Yeah. It takes a copious knowledge of the past to shape the future, they say. And also, life is not computed by its duration, but by its donation. This man we mentioned, the likes of uh, Felix uh, Rago and so many others. Yes. Uh, God and God God and so many, God mm. them, Silvana, yes. Sakalona, so many of them, Silvana, Sakalona, and so many of them. The, most of them are still alive. Some of them are gone. But I think Nigeria should do something about this. Now, yes. uh, let, let's go back to, I said, before we close, now that uh, most of these things, it's almost impossible for Nigeria to go back to them. Mm. Because by now, this thing would have been a running thing in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. And then the idea of uh, hiking uh, flight prices and so on wouldn't have been there mm. if they had done the needful of making use of these people yeah. that have taken their time to you know, do a research on this and come out with something. Mm. But because they are not used, now that the, the mining concept now is here to assess, to make sure that lives are safe and so on, do you think Nigeria will look their way? That's the that, 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 that's a huge question. The, the big challenge, if you ask me, they have no option than to look their way. Understand? They have no option than to look their way. And then we must not also emphasize that it is impossible to come to the table and talk. It is possible. The impossibility has to do with the leadership structure and the mindset of those who are in office. You know, you know they are usually in power, not in office, because office goes with authority. Power goes with coercion. So they like to be in power, not in office, office where they can exercise authority, but where they can exercise coercion, where they can talk. You see, in Nigeria, the word of a president is still a decree. 
You understand? The constitution does not even supersede in most cases. And that's why the, the court can, help, can hold someone or say, release him. And the attorney general can interpret what he likes or read or misread what, what he likes or, 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 or fit. So until we begin to have system that talks about Nigerians, that tries to give power to the Nigerians, we may not get it. And that's why it's good to have a constitution that is autonomous, that is um, a home built, that allow where we go to talk. The Nigerian like constitution, we didn't see constituent assembly, we didn't see um, uh, um, uh, drafting committee. What we had was a debate committee chaired by Justice Miki Tobi of Blessed Memory, God rest his soul. And then in 11 months, uh, the 1979 constitution was brought out, dusted off, and other new things added there on. And then and then we had the 1989 constitution. Today, we are still grappling with that. I think we need to be doing more. We need to uh, come together as a nation. We don't have any other contract apart from this one. And make every person, every group, every state, every region, every ethnicity in this nation feel that sense of belonging. Abacha was nearly talking about it when he was envisioning uh, a question of 1995 draft where he said a rotational presidency. Every region will have a vice president and then have a, a, a shot at the presidency for five year period, for a five year period, and then hand over to another region and continue with the vice president. We must get it right. And then that when a region is doing the presidency, you should have both the vice president and the president so that if the president dies, the vice will step in. I think we need to come together and look at what works for us. We should stop copying from the West, from US, from the United Kingdom. They have different peculiarities. They have different concepts. They have relative uh, 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 facts, you understand? Uh, affecting their system that are different from ours. We must come together and talk. That's the only way to make the country work, by negotiation. The only Nigeria that can work is negotiation or a negotiated Nigeria. People should stop telling us that the unity of Nigeria is not negotiable. We must talk about it, and we, and we must also uh, talk about how it is going to work. Thank you. All right. If the pro if the or if the priority of any government is the protection of life and property mm. of our uh, of our indigents, mm. then what do you think about these? Uh, that's just the final because of mm. our time. Mm. What do you think about this? The mining concept. I if they are, if they the, are to the, protect the, the, lives. Yes, the, the mining concept will work with the state to perform the functions of the state. And it takes me back to something. In Montevideo, Conf I think, Convention of 1933, that talks about the status or the charter or what makes a state a state. It talks about three things land, population, and government. Now, it simply means that for a state to exist, there must be a land, a geographical um, uh, portion of the earth, and there must be people, a population, who are inhabiting that specific location of the earth. Then, from among the people, should come a government that will protect both the earth, for, for which you have the air force. The sea, if it's a coastal state like Nigeria, you have the navy and the land for which you have the army, and then you have other ancillary or other support security agencies. You understand to help in terms of like this is where the mining concept comes in a support group to do the work of protecting lives and properties of Nigerian citizens who are at risk population following the war. Thank you. All right, our wonderful viewers, this is the much we are going to take today. I let it also be readily known that the mining concepts, they are already on ground and they are doing what they know best. We're only praying that the, the, the federal government will also assist them to ensure that they go around the nation, all the well affected areas, and to make sure that these uh, explosives will stop harming people. There are so many persons who never witnessed the war, but they are without protected legs and hands as a result of these explosives that are found in so many farmlands. Now that the demanding concept, they are out to ensure that everybody will be free. It is also good. I think the likes of Arago is still alive. He's a consultant right now. He has a, he's running a private consultancy office in Lagos. I think these people should be consulted and also to help to better the economy of this country. If Indonesia could achieve this, what they achieved 56 years ago, Nigeria can still do better. These are a country and these are just a disaster. We aren't going to run away from this country. Nigeria must be better again. Having said this, all right, Comrade Nandi Lekwachi, thank you so much for being part of today's program. It's always my pleasure. Thank you. And this is UN Command, Chinedum Gotson Adele. Until we come your way again, remember on Tuesday we'll be having another explosive program on this. And also, Wednesday, Thursday, we'll be bringing you Odyssey of St. Moses, Obunna. This will be coming your way. We have a pile of waiting.
Don't touch the dial. Keep watching and keep listening to Living Radio 90.9 and watching Living Television. Bye for now.